Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to you about hustling. And if you're like me, four years ago, I didn't know what that meant before I even came to America. And for a lot of you guys, you might be like, well, how the hell is that going to help me, you know, if you're doing content marketing or different bits. But for, for me, what I've come to understand hustling to mean, like since I moved to America, um, and kind of this frame of thought that hopefully I can give you some ideas that you can take away, is really that in our day-to-day -day lives, we're always playing different games. And how can we kind of find out what the rules of those games are and maybe do things a little bit differently? Now, I'm really pleased to be down today. Um, I particularly enjoyed Jason's talk earlier, Jason from LinkedIn. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to enjoy my one as much because my talk is actually uh, based on how I hacked <laughs> LinkedIn's advertising system. Um, I heard there's a couple of guys down from LinkedIn, so... Uh, hopefully, they have to get them to sign NDAs or something before we let them out. Um, so this story, uh, just to give you an example again about hustling. So start with the story, set up things. About four years ago, I was back in London, and I was just me and my business partner and three interns. And one day, I was just reading TechCrunch, and I saw this article saying, hey, there's this incubator kind of school for startups in America. And they're giving every company that joins $100,000. And it said at the bottom, it's like, we're, sa we're saving one spot left for someone reading this article. So I said to my business partner, I was like, hey, ma'am, imagine what we could do with, with that. We should apply. And he's like, come on, like, there's no point. Because we looked at their Twitter account and said, oh, we just got 2,000 applications in the last 24 hours. So he was like, you know, we'll just get lost in the noise. There's no point in even applying. And so what I want to do is I want to show you what actually we did to get this last spot. Because um, a lot of times when I, I go to a talk, I want to see, it's cool they tell you the story, but what actually went on, you know? And so we had this objective, like, get into AngelPad, which was the incubator. But as I said, it was, it was like, how do we stand out from the noise. Um, they, they would, we, we, we thought the best way to do that was to get on the radar of the guy running it. Um, because they were telling us, like, you know, just submit an application. And it was like, well, if we just submit an application, it's much like a job interview. Like, you're getting 2,000 job applications. Like, how do you stand out from the crowd? And so... Once we'd decided, all right, this was our objective, get on his radar, thinking about how are we going to do that. The example that I'm going to use and that we used was using LinkedIn advertising. Um, at the time, uh, I thought to use this just because I was like, well, Google AdWords is quite established already. And I thought that LinkedIn, because it's a bit more niche, might be more opportunities to kind of to just um, mess with it a bit. Uh, so, yeah. What we've got is we've got the game. How do we get on this guy's attention? And now we, we know what system we're using in LinkedIn. And now the fun part is how to find out the rules of whatever game we're playing. Now, if you've never seen a LinkedIn app before, basically it, it, they kind of just come up on the side of the screen if you're like on LinkedIn ever, a bit like Google AdWords, you know. And so the first step to finding out the rules of this is I had to find out, all right, what are the rules of this ad unit. And so the way I found out the rules is just by typing a load of junk in and seeing what does it let me type in and what does it not. And so I was able to find out that, OK, the rules of a LinkedIn ad is you, you've got to have its a title, less than 25 characters, description, less than 75 characters, and a 50 by 50 image. Now, one other bit I found as well is I didn't actually use this, but you could actually set the name of the ad to whatever company you wanted, like even not your own company. So you could set an ad making it look like if you were Uber, you could put an ad coming out from Lyft. Uh, it just let you do that. <laughs> I, I didn't use this bit, but just, you, this is about finding the rules here. And so we know I found out the rules of what does the ad unit, what, what, what can I do there? And then I had to find out how do we target the ad on LinkedIn? And now LinkedIn lets you do some really cool stuff. You can target people based on their, their, job, uh, their company they're at, uh, uh, their job title, like lots of different attributes. 
And as you lay on these targeting, what happens is this, this number on the right, it tells you how many people your advert is going to be targeting. And so because we're finding out the rules here, uh, what we did is, what I did is, I ran an ad just with job title CEO and company Bungle. So that number on the right said one, because, you know, like, we've got to find out the rules. And so did an ad using that. But it said, you know, we can't run an ad. You're not targeting anyone. You've got to, you've got to target more people. You're, you've got to, we can't run an ad just targeting one person, you know. So I added one more person. So now we're targeting the CEO of Vungle or AOL. So that number on the right said two. But it, it said it's still like it's too small, you know. So I added one more. And then four. No. Nope. Five. So just, just adding more and more, so that number just kept on increasing, and then i just try and submit it each time, and it was just pushing me back. Six. Now, I'm not sure how much time we've got, but if you're all right, I just want to keep going through this process, because this is the process that I went through, so I want you guys to go see as well, right? So, I'm going to have one more, seven, so we're now talking this. And then it worked. So I wasn't expecting this to happen, but I was just going through it. And I guess just no one had gone through this process on LinkedIn before. But now I know the rules. The minimum number of people to run an ad on LinkedIn, you just had to target more than seven. That, that was the arbitrary number. And so the next step was how to bid, like how to pay for your ad. Now, a lot of you guys are doing marketing, etc. so you might know that uh, much the same as on Google AdWords, you can do cost per click, and that's what LinkedIn advised. They suggested, hey, we suggest you do bid cost per click, $8. Um, but the other option they do is CPM, cost per thousand impressions, and I was talking seven people. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. So it's $2 per thousand, and I'm targeting seven. <laughs> now, the last, the last uh, part of the rules that I had to figure out was the review process. So when you submit an ad on, on, on LinkedIn, um, it, it, it kind of said, hey, we'll get back to you within 24 hours. Now, what this kind of showed to me is they were doing a manual review process of every ad that you submit. And sometimes when I submitted an ad, because as I'll show you in a second, some of these ads were a bit crazy, they were like, look, we don't, know, we don't like what you're linking to. And so what I did is, because it's a manual review process, I found that you could just submit it again, and someone different would review it the next time. And also, if they didn't like what I was linking to, what I did is actually just used a, a URL shortener. So I pointed it to something generic, they approved the ad, then I just changed where that URL pointed to once they'd approved it. <laughs> now... Bearing in mind, uh, whenever you're doing something like this, like it's important to kind of know the, the risks of what you're doing, you know? So when I was doing this, like, I was kind of, in my mind, I just took precautions, like, so I, I used, uh, obviously the most obvious thing that could go wrong is that my account would get banned, so I just created like a fake account to be doing all this testing with. Um, and nothing that I was doing was too illegal, hopefully, so I didn't push the boundaries too much. Now, putting, it all, putting all of that into practice, let, let's come back to the story. So there's this incubator, and there's one spot left, but there's 2,000 people applying. How do we get on that guy's attention? So we, I, I knew this is the guy um, running it. And so what I did is, knowing, again, the rules of what can you do with LinkedIn, I created an advert with a picture of his face on the side of the screen. Because this complies with all the rules. It's a 50 by 50 picture. <laughs> it's left them 50 characters, etc. And then, you know, I knew the targeting parameters. I knew the minimum people to number of people to target is seven. So what that meant is 
by knowing that the minimum of people to target with an ad is seven to get it approved, I now had a way to target down to actually an individual. Because what I could do is I could make the stuff so specific that it would only target him. So it's like company angel pad, title founder. And then what I'd do is I'd just add in six junk people that I didn't even really care if they saw the ad. You know, like just founder of Bank of China or, or some obscure thing that they, they might not even understand it even if they saw it, you know? And so I ran that ad targeting, oh, sorry, targeting Tomas, his ex-colleagues, and, and his investors, etc. And so that day, basically what happened is, it was the first day, saw this article on TechCrunch. There's one spot left. This was just about two to three hours, just basically created this ad campaign really fast because I'd been messing around with LinkedIn. I knew the rules. So just created an ad campaign um, and went to sleep and then kind of just saw how it went the next day. So if you had been one of, uh, connected to Tomas on LinkedIn and browsing LinkedIn that day, basically, you'd see a picture of his face, you'd click it, and it just came to this landing page that was hacked together with a video where it's just me and my business partner, we just did this one take, super scrappy, and we're just pitching Tomas. We're like, Tomas, we've seen your background, you're a legend, we deserve this last spot, we won't let you down, this is my phone number, this is my email address, and basically, as I said, just went to sleep. And the next day, I just got a super short email. It was like, hey, let's have a, let's have a Skype call. And so, I was like, awesome. And so, thank you. So, basically picked up, the, uh, had this call, as he said, can we have a call? And so, it's like, hey, and it's like, hey, is that Jack? And I'm like, yeah. It's like, hey, I saw your ad. The first thing to says, take it down now. <laughs> it's like, everyone's contacting me about this. <laughs> he said he'd been on a flight from New York to San Francisco, so he hadn't had internet. Basically, got off the flight and took out his iPhone. He had over 20 emails from people. Basically, like, dude, these kids really want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, basically, um, let's have a look. The, we basically... Um, Having had this phone call, so I saw the ad, the next day had a phone call with him, and then over the course of that week, we had like one or two more Skype calls. And then basically, he said, all right, guys, towards um, after a week after we had this, he's like, all right, guys, I made a decision. Let's have a final Skype call. I've decided who's got the last spot. And we're like, oh, man, do you have to, we've got our in whole team here. Do you have to reject us on camera? Can't you just phone us to reject us? And he's like, no, we'll do Skype call. I'm like, okay. And he's like, all right, guys, um, he's basically like, if I give this last spot to you, then you've got to move to America permanently because I've invested in companies before and then they just go back to their country and investors don't like that. And we we're like, yep, that's fine, we'll move to America. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay then, well, you've got the last spot. And so we're like high fiving around the office and he's like, it starts on Monday. <laughs> so just put the first, first flight out here. And, and so that's how I ends up moving to America. <laughs> now, maybe the best thing about this advert was how much it cost. If you remember in the process, one of the bits we looked at was how, how to pay for this ad, and we chose CPM. This ad cost one cent. <laughs> because... We were paying $2 or something per thousand people. This got five impressions, <laughs> two clicks, and, and that was Tomas. Now, just to give you a few quick other examples, just so you don't think that was like complete uh, luck, you know. Um, at the time, uh, I was just reading, you know, because what we were doing at the time is we were kind of making videos the companies. Um, Bungle's evolved a lot since then, but at the time we were just trying to get money any way we could. So we saw this article, hey, Color just raised 41 million. So what we did is, let's see, can we get the attention of their CEO? And so again, ran an app with his face. Um, <laughs> this is the CEO of Color. And we got an email from him a couple of days later, and he was like, hey, you should pitch Lindsay on our marketing team. We've already got an agency, but we'll see if we can kind of slot you in. 
and, and that one cost two dollars there. <laughs> and then we were like, can we get Rovio, because they're a big app as well. Um, we didn't get the CEO of Rovio. Uh, this, we had this one, like, do you work at Rovio? We're trying to contact this guy. We didn't get the CEO, but we got one of the VPs of Rovio uh, emailed us, and that cost three dollars. And then lastly, oops, sorry, lastly, I wanted Spotify as a client, so I was just like, I want Spotify as a client. And um, we actually ended up getting them as a client. Uh, they were like, hey, we saw your, your ad. That, that one was a bit more expensive, though. That one was $16. <laughs> and so just to summarize everything, like, this is a really specific example, and this was a little while ago. And obviously, we've got guys from LinkedIn in the audience, so I'm sure they're just going to lock this down straight away. So there's no point in all of us trying to we create that, but hopefully you can kind of use that same thought process with some of the um, challenges that you've got and try and just think, do I have to follow the rules? Or can I just see the constraints and maybe there's uh, other ways that I can get around them? Um, this is my contact details. I'd love to hear how, how you guys end up using some of these ideas. Thank you very much. Do you any questions at all? Anyone? Can you go back one and follow up? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah? Okay. So um, I spoke to, uh, I, I had done this talk a little while ago, and one person who was in the audience then uh, emailed me afterwards that they had kind of used this frame of thinking that they'd seen uh, Jay Z was having like a private. Uh, concert, and he, he kind of just looked at the, the rules of the competition, and he ended up winning, like, a ticket to this, like, private concert with Jay-Z from kind of thinking through um, stuff like this. So, was there any other question? Yep. Um, so, uh, these kinds of scrappy things work really well when you are the CEO. Sure, and sure. You're doing it. Um, so, we did a lot of scrappy things like this when we first started out, but now we're a company of, like, People. Yeah. We have people on the marketing team, you know, and they're not as um, receptive to these kinds of scrappy ideas. So, is there anything you have changed, um, kind of the way you approach the situations, and how I could kind of get uh, the marketing team on board with these kinds of ideas? Sure. I mean, obviously, uh, yeah, you raise a good point that it's like obviously there's a lot kind of at stake here. Like, you know, you're. This is really great that you can go outside the box this much, but if it backfired a lot, then you know, it could be um, uh, really challenging. But I think that you can kind of break it down. As I said, there's maybe smaller challenges within a company that, um, that you might have that doesn't have to be as publicly crazy as this. But you could maybe think, is there, I've got a challenge, is there maybe just different ways that I could do it? So one example that I could give that it wasn't really very public and, you know, if it went wrong, there wouldn't be much at stake was we were really trying to, uh, everyone's trying to hire engineers, and so we were really trying to like, um, get uh, iPhone engineers. And so I was just thinking through, and it was like, rather than everyone on, you know, you've got the apps, I was thinking, who's going to be the best iPhone engineers? And I thought, with iPhone, you actually have a whole jailbreak community. So you have the normal app store, but you have a whole hidden kind of jailbroken app store. So what I did is I just looked at all the people that made the apps on the jailbroken app store and, and reached out to them. Um, and they were, those sort of people didn't normally get approached by recruiters because they're not going to have a LinkedIn account, they're not on the public app store, um, and so that was a different way of thinking about things. So I think it's about just bearing in mind you can do stuff like this, but maybe it doesn't have to be as public. Um, you can just see less public challenges. Figuring out the tricky ways in, if you had any smaller major failures, and kind of what, what you can learn from those as well. Yeah, um, I had been asked this question before as well, because I do recognize that, um, you know, like, it's all great being, showing these outrageous examples, but not everything always um, goes to plan, etc. And I don't want to, um, you know, uh, Lots of people, some people would be okay with all this, but some people would not, and that's perfectly fine. Um, there hasn't been really, really bad stuff happen, um, because, you know, nothing here was 
too outrageous, hopefully. The, the one example I can give was um, we ran one ad, like, hey, we want blah, blah, blah as a client, targeting a dating uh, startup, so match.com. And um, they uh, sent us like a cease and desist uh, letter, like a fax or something, I can't remember. It's just saying take down. And so what we just did is we, again, it's just evaluating. Cease and desist, it's really unlikely they were going to actually like, sue us, you know. And so what we did in that situation is just kind of turned it back on the lawyer. We just said, like, look, this, dude, this is only people at your company. It's not public. It's not because they were like, hey, you're using our logo. Or whatever. We're like, we're just targeting your employees. And we just said to him, can you just introduce us to someone on your business development team instead? And then they actually did. Um, so I think <laughs> it's just about not being arrogant. If someone finds what you're doing offensive, you know, you put someone's face up and they're like, hey, dude, just take it down. You're not arrogant, you're just like, look, I don't want, not trying to mess with you, you're just trying to think creative ways to get your attention, not, don't want to disturb you. And so just if someone has an objection, don't be arrogant and just maybe explain it to them. And in this case, the lawyer was like, oh, that's pretty cool, actually, you know. <laughs> All right, I think we're out of time, but thanks a lot for having me. Down.